Of all the battlesuits in the Tau army, the Crisis battlesuits are the most iconic. They can be loaded up with so much firepower, they're going to be a core part of my army for the tournament this coming weekend. However, I've been sort of scared of building them and I've been putting it off for the past few weeks. You see, this guy right here is the broadside battlesuit and I got into such a mess building this guy. To make sure I'm flexible enough in the future that I I can swap the weapons out, it's fairly typical to magnetize the broadside battle suit. However, they are notoriously difficult because if you get the angles wrong, the arms never sit right. That's essentially what I've done right here. As a result, that's put me off building my crisis battle suits. I don't want to make the same mistake. So for a few weeks now, I've been putting off building these properly because I want to magnetize all the weapon variations. I don't want to lock myself out of any future potential loadouts because these 12 models here are 120 pounds. So you can see why I don't want to magnetize wrong just like I've done with my broadside battle suit. Over the past few weekends, I have been building these crisis battle suits. So far, I've spent about two hours on each of these three models. The things which are taking me ages so far are finding the right bits on the sprue, as well as once you actually cut them off the sprue, you typically have to clean up the little plastic nubs as well as the mold lines. Mold lines are exactly what they sound like. They're the leftover lines from the molds that make these plastic parts. Regardless, I have got them to this stage and there's still a whole bunch I need to do. The first thing to do is cut the pieces off the sprue for the legs. I then need to clean up the excess plastic. That's just a case of literally cutting away the little bits of plastic and the mold line. With that done, I then just need to file down and smooth out the area from where I've been cutting away the plastic nerve. With these areas smoothed out, it means once paint is on the model, they'll be super smooth and they'll look fantastic. Finally, a little bit of plastic glue creates a bond between the two plastic pieces which is unbreakable. Once these have fused together, nothing will break these apart. It will be as solid as you can get. With that done, we're actually looking great and these guys definitely are not skipping leg day. With the legs done, I then move on to the jetpack. Now the jetpacks are different from the legs in that they're easy to glue on, but there's nothing to line them up against. I'm essentially eyeballing here that they are straight. I think I did a pretty good job in the end across all of them. They look pretty straight to me, so let's Let's just move on. The next thing to do is get the arms on the models. The arms are what all of the weapons go onto and you know the drill from here. What we're going to do is cut the arms off the sprue one by one. We're then going to tidy up all of the little plastic nubs and then we're going to pose the arms so they hold the weapons in an interesting way. So they're looking pretty good from here to be honest and that's all that's needed from the arms. These guys now have arms but the observant among you may say wait a minute they're missing a pretty core part. Where's the head? I think you're onto something there. If they can't see what they're shooting at, these guys are going to be fairly useless. So let's fix that. The first thing to do, as always, is cut the heads off the sprue along with the antenna. With the antenna and the heads ready to go, I just needed to glue the antenna to the heads. I did find this challenging, to be honest, because it's not super obvious which way round they should go. I'm not convinced in the end I did get it right, but they're stuck on now. They're not going anywhere, so we're gonna run with it. With the heads glued on, we're actually pretty much wrapped up now. One final thing we do need to do is make sure they've got some shoulder guards on. What we're going to do is cut them off the sprue, tidy up the plastic nerves as well as the mold lines, and then very carefully glue them on. I did find these a bit odd, if I'm honest, because they felt super flexible. I was just eyeballing where they should go. In the end, I feel like it did look pretty great and I'm really happy with the end result. So there we go, we've got three finished crisis battle suits. I am really happy with how they look in the end and I'm really excited to have them as a core part of my army from here. I am running a total of eight crisis battle suits in my army so I still need to build five more of these out. The only thing left to do on these guys is add their weapons. I was so happy when I was looking at these guys to realize magnetizing them is going to be so much easier than the broadsides. That's not one for this video though. We're actually going to move on to building other 
other units for now. These three units have taken a total of 10 hours to build and get to this stage. However, those 10 hours are down to me being scared and also overthinking everything. I do think to build out the remaining five will only take me half of the time these three have taken me. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Do hit the like button. It goes such a long way to motivating me and helping me get these models built out. From here, I'm going to carry on building other units for my army so I can actually make it to the tournament this weekend. Please do subscribe to see if I can make it to this tournament. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the next video.